Amen, amen, amen. I, I hope when you leave here today, you feel like you've been to church. Pray with me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Father, bless us. Bless us with the forgiveness of our sin. Bless us with your grace to remember them no more. Father, I pray if there's one person here today under the sound of my voice that doesn't know you as personal Savior, Father, I pray that they won't leave this building today without saying, I believe in Jesus. Father, if there's one that needs your healing, may there not be one that doesn't come forward for prayer and leave this place thanking you for those things that do not exist as though they already do. Father, you're a good God. And Lord, we're not so good of a people. But Lord, you have forgiven us. And today we stand in this presence worshiping you, thanking you that in spite of us, you love us anyway. To all the church, said amen. Amen. We got to get busy. Turn to Luke 5. While you're turning to Luke 5, today's message is new wine and old wineskins, but I really like to stop trying to put God in a box. Say amen. There's no telling what would happen in our nation if the religious folks would try to, would stop trying to put God in their box an idea of religiosity. I'm going to preach faster if more of you, amen. amen. Smart Alex. That's awesome. The Lord wants to speak to somebody here in this service today. I trust you'll listen. Verse 5, one day Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. The people were crowded around him and they were listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats. One of the boats was belonging to Simon. You know him as Peter. And he asked him to put out a little from the shore. And he sat down and he taught the people out of the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And then Simon and his other brothers that were fishing with him turned religious. And I said, look, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we know who you are and, and, and all this cool stuff, but I don't think you understand who you're talking to. We are professional fishermen. We have fished all night long, and I'm here to declare to you that the fish are not biting. And D doesn't let me use the word shut up. So I'll say that I believe translated a little that I think Jesus just probably went, you know what, will you just hush and do what I tell you to do? How many of you ever believe Jesus told you that before? Man, just hush with your excuses and do what I'm asking you to do. Hush with your doubt and just believe me. Hush with your doubt and just pray for God to deliver you. Just hush for a little while and understand. Be still and know that I'm God. I think too much of our prayer life is spent with us talking and not enough listening. And Jesus is trying to, look at your neighbor and say, he's trying to bless you today. He's trying to bless you today. He won't, do you understand he wants to bless you today? 
We got to praying for little Jesse up here last night about 6 o'clock, that 10-year-old that's laying up in ICU in, in, in uh, Texas Children. We got to praying last night, and there was about 9 or 10 people that's praying, and, and I, I couldn't even sit down, and I got up, and I said, Heavenly Father, we're not begging you. Heavenly Father, we're not even, we're not even asking you. No more than my children have to come and beg and ask in a way of pleading with, with their father. He is your father and he wants to bless you. Just open your mouth or close your mouth and let him say amen. You don't have to beg God. God wants to bless you this morning. He wants to pour out blessing on you that you cannot contain. But you and I have got to stop trying to figure out and letting God know, well, you know, we could do that, but you got to remember this over here. Quit putting God. Look at your neighbor say, Put, quit putting God in a box. He said, I just need you to follow me and not your traditional man-made ideas of religion. Do you know that that's really what religion is? Religion, uh, because at the end of the day, Jesus didn't come to give us religion. He actually came to give us a personal relationship. But man took what they believed as religion, and then we came up with denominations, and we just began to take this at the foundation, and we just began to stack things on top of it that was our ideologies. And before you know it, we came up with stuff that nobody or their brother could ever live to. He said, I just want you to do what I said. Go out into the deep. And Simon, while in his, and you know they were fussing. You know they were complaining. And, uh, but he said, you know what, Lord, because you said so, then fine, I'll do it. He said, Master, we've worked hard all night. We've caught nothing. And in verse 6, it says, and when they had done so, and when they had done so, they caught, they went, they didn't put God in their box. They went and did exactly what Jesus said. It says they caught, verse 6, such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. So they signaled their partners in the other boats and said, come and help us. And those people came. They filled their boat so full that they began to sink. I'm here today to declare to tell you the reason we have 500 and almost 30 people here again this Sunday has nothing to do with the preaching, has nothing to do with the singing. It's because you're opening your mouth and letting people know Jesus is blessing you up in this place. I can't go anywhere that somebody says, you're the cowboy church pastor, I am. They go, I don't go to church, but I can't tell you how much I've heard about it lately. People want to know, and they want to go to church where something's happening, say amen. amen. A, a preacher friend of mine called me uh, this past week, and he says, may I have breakfast with you? I said, are you buying? He says, yes. I said, then yes. And I, I said, what do you want to talk about? He goes, man, I want to know what you're doing. What are you doing? What's happening? What have you put in place? I said, I'm going to tell you straight up, nothing different is happening now that's happened for 15 years except that God's people are getting excited about what God is doing. God's people are telling other folks about Jesus, and they're just coming up and filling up this place right now. That's all that's happening. Say amen. It's all that's happening. And listen to me. If we will continue to not put God in a box, I'm telling you, the elders aren't smart enough to figure out what to do next and how to hold people. We're not smart enough. We're not wise enough. We don't know what to do. But I know this. It's God's problem. And if we keep keeping him in a box, he'll never show us. If we take him outside the box, he's going to be with us every step. Say amen. Amen. He says when they'd done so, when Peter saw what had happened just by being obedient to God and not doing what was traditional, he fell at Jesus' knees and he said, verse 8, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all of his companions, all of those that were watching that day were astonished, say astonished, at the catch of fish that had been taken that day. I'm astonished at what God is doing. Would you say amen? I just want to stay out of his way and don't put him in a box. Let me give you point number two. In verse 17, one day Jesus was teaching and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, say Pharisees, say teachers of the law, 
So you'll know that crowd, they were sitting there, the religious folks, and they had come from every village uh, of Galilee, from Judea to Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat, and they tried to take him into the house, but like today, it was too full. And they thought, well, what are we going to do? We can't get our friends to Jesus. And they said they came up with a neck idea. And so what they did, they cut a hole in the roof, and they lowered down their friend in front of Jesus. And Jesus said something absolutely miraculous in verse 20. It says, when Jesus saw their faith, he looked and said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Now, I want to help you real quick with that. Maybe, maybe you don't need to come to church that often. Maybe you're more, I have to come every Sunday and I'm still mean. Say amen. I, I come every Sunday and I'm still a li little wicked. I, I come every Sunday and last night when I walked into this place and there was a snake in the floor, I, I'm just going to say I asked Jesus to forgive me for what I said when I stepped on it. Can I get an amen? I'm just saying I'm a little human. Some people didn't laugh at that I thought it was quite funny I mean I'm just keeping it real with you don't put a snake on me and think I'm gonna say bless you Jesus now nah, it ain't gonna happen and I'm gonna say something else if you put a snake on me you better be ready to meet Jesus say man I don't do snakes a tiger can get lo let loose in here I'm gonna try to wrestle it down but I will run like Forrest Gump from a grass snake I don't do snakes I don't remember now what I was talking about Huh? Religious, religious folk. Look at the person next to you and say, quit being so religious. Quit being so religious. Listen to me. Religion in America in the last 40 years has felt. The only churches that are growing are those that understand it's just a relationship with Jesus. It's just a relationship with Jesus. And it's not, it's, it's, it's not working out. Look at Look at what's happened right here. Let's go back to the Word. Yeah, that's where I was at. <laughs> you may not need to come to church all the time, but do you understand the man that was lowered down through the roof, that Jesus saved him, that Jesus healed him, and it had nothing to do with his faith. It had to do with the faith of those that brought him. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. I don't think you got it. That's why you need to get out there and start asking people to come to church with you. Well, I hope they have faith. No, no, no. Just bring them. Jesus healed that guy, saved that guy, and says, y'all's faith has made him whole. Somebody needs to give the Lord a hand praise if you've got somebody with you this morning. You see, I, I, I'm not believing Jesus just to touch me. I believe in Jesus to touch somebody that got invited this morning. Can I get an Amen. And so all of a sudden, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, your sins is forgiven. Verse 21, then the Pharisees, say religious folks, and the teachers of the law began to think to themselves, who is this guy that, that speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And this does not fit our traditional beliefs. We are hearing these things, but this isn't how we've done it in years. This is not a, I'm going to have fun because he's sitting here. It's not how Dale Lee used to do it. Can I get an amen? Amen. I wish you, I would have been first and he'd have been second. So he would have heard, this ain't how Pastor Harlan used to do it. Amen. Amen. What, I, what I'm telling you, folks, is that back in this day, 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 for years, for years, for years, preachers always say, well, we ain't never done it like that before. That started back in the book of Luke. Amen. And what I'm here today to tell you is this week, we don't need to do it like we did last week. Can I get an amen? We ought to wake up afresh and anew with a new vision, with a new zeal, with a new desire to see God today work in someone else's life today because of the life that I'm living before them. Say amen. And Jesus knew what they were thinking in verse 22. Why are you thinking these things in your heart? What is it easier to say? Your sins are forgiven. Or get up and walk, but I want you to know that the Son of Man, say God, say Jesus, 
has authority on earth to forgive sins. And so he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up and take up your mat and go home. Immediately, he stood up in front of them and took what he had been lying on, and he went and been going to the temple and began to praise God. And everyone there was amazed and began to praise God. They were filled with awe and said, we've seen something remarkable happening in this place. Listen to me. There's so, there's like, I don't know, 93 people that's been baptized in the last 14 months. Listen, people are coming because there's something miraculous happening up in this place. And the thing that's happening in here, I'm going to say it again to be repetitive, it's because you're inviting them to come to the house of God. You're inviting them to come. Some of you's talking about your church out in public and nobody's ever heard you talk about your church. You see, some of them see that something's different about you. You're talking about the Lord. Jesus knew what they were thinking. And when, look, 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 even those that didn't believe, but they saw that crippled thing, even though those that was real religious but didn't quite understand Jesus saw, saw, they saw, they saw, they saw. They could deny who Jesus was, but they couldn't, just, they couldn't deny because they've seen that man crippled since he was a baby. Come on. So they couldn't deny what they saw. You see, some of us can deny a lot of things, but we can't deny what we're seeing. Say amen. Amen. Let me give you point number three. Oh, wow. Here's the tough one. May I tell you that Jesus was not scared of a party. Now, I know y'all don't like to see your Jesus like that. Y'all like to see y'all's Jesus like on a, on a motorcade sitting up on top of an armored vehicle like maybe the Pope and just waving at the crowd, looking holy, say amen, looking holy. I want to tell you that about that time, Jesus went out and he saw a tax collector by the name of Levi, you'll know him later as Matthew, and Levi was sitting at his tax booth, and he said, follow me, Jesus said to him, and Levi got up, he left everything and followed him, and Levi said, man, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, I'm going to invite some of my friends over, and oh, we're going to have us a party, say amen. He didn't have a prayer meeting. He didn't have a church service. He went to his house and, and turned on the, the, the disco ball and turned off the lights and turned on the music. And he had a party, verse 29 says, and there was a large crowd, say large crowd, of tax collectors and sinners that were eating with him. He threw a party. Over on the other side was a bunch of religious people uh, still beginning to get ready to eat. And all of a sudden, Jesus comes up on the scene and he looks at the religious people and kind of nods and waves and kind of nods and walks off. And he goes over there and joins the party. There was some drinking going on. Wine, for those of you that was offended by that. They was drinking them some wine. They was playing some music. In fact, I want to believe for some reason, Jackie, that six blocks away, you could hear Matthew saying, all my rowdy friends are coming over tonight. I want to help you with something. Jesus didn't act like them, but he rubbed elbows with them so they could get some Jesus on them. Do you understand me this morning? I'm not disrespecting my Jesus. I'm saying he said, let's just go to word. Let's go to word. And, 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 and they said, whoa, just a second. We're over here as religious folks having a little chicken scatty dinner with green beans and a roll and a salad and some iced tea. <laughs> me you ever had that in a Baptist church. <laughs> In this church, amen. <laughs> Hang on a second. Why is this man claiming to be the Messiah, verse 29 translated, and he's eating and drinking with tax collectors and sinners? I will tell you what Jesus said. You boys need to quit trying to put me in a box. You boys need to quit trying to put me in a box. He said it like this. 
we all get to image Jesus like we want to, but I think he said it with a little tone in his voice. Is it, or it is, it is not, verse 31, the healthy who need a doctor, but it's the sick up in this place that need me today. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not the religious folks that need Jesus. It's those that are dying without Jesus that need me today. And I'm going to tell you right now, I hope y'all don't run me off. I'm not going to compromise this word. But in the next two years, I plan on having some stuff that'll get some prostitutes on these grounds. I plan on having some stuff that'll get some drug users on this ground. I plan on having some stuff that'll get some whiskey pagans on these grounds. I want to get some stuff where some people are addicted to alcohol, drugs, sex, immorality. I want to get them under. I'm not going to act like them, but I want to be around them so they can get a little Jesus on them. Do you understand what I'm saying? My God, we've got to quit worrying you know that somebody came to me six months ago. It said, well, if we do that, what do you think the other local churches are going to think about us? I could give a flip what the rest of the folks think. I don't care what another church thinks about CCOC. Come on now. If you do, that's fine. I'm telling you, your pastor does not care what another church in this area thinks about this church when we're baptizing 93 and they're baptizing 9. And I say it with love. I say it with tenderness. I'm just saying I believe Jesus is coming back. There's some lost souls that need Jesus, and i got to get them in this place. Anyway, that's the introduction. <laughs> if we really believed hell was real, I wouldn't have to preach like this for you to go reach people. Amen. Say amen. amen. The third and po final point. The religious people looked over at their, their party and questioned one of the disciples and says, well, they're over there eating. They're not even fasting. They don't fast. Can I tell you something that's going to shock you? Do you know that there's no command to fast anywhere in the Bible but one place, and it's in the book of Leviticus? I didn't say it's not a suggestion. Didn't say it's not a teaching. Not saying it's not a desire. But there's no command to fast anywhere other than in the book of Leviticus. And you fasted there in Leviticus for the removal of your sins. Listen to me. The blood of Jesus now removes my sin, not my fasting. Now, you're going to hear me preach about prayer and fasting. Say amen. Oh, yeah, we're not going there. I'm not saying don't fast. I can look at your neighbor and say, we may all need to fast a little bit. Can I get an Amen. But I'm telling you, don't live, don't put God in a box. And he told them in this parable in verse 36, no one tears a piece out of a new garment to patch an old one. Otherwise, they will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not even match the old. And verse 37 says, and no one pours new wine, say new wine, into old wineskins, otherwise the new wineskins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No new wine must be poured into, and, and yeah, no, new wine must be poured into wineskins, and no one after drinking the old wine wants the new, for they say that the old is better. And here's what I want to give you in conclusion that's going to raise an eyebrow or two, but I want to encourage you as we get ready to go into an invitation here in just a moment, stop trying trying to fit God into your life. Yeah, I know that surprises you. Stop trying to fit God into your life and start fitting your life into God. 
Do you see the difference? You know what the difference will be? Results. The difference will be results. Jesus came to set me free from religion and to live free in him. This week, I took a half a day and went to the deer lease. And while I was in the deer lease, I was praying and I said, Lord, I just want to be used. I just want to be used. And the Lord told me, well, if you wasn't so lazy on Sundays, after you preached twice, I might could use you more. I was sorry I asked. And the Lord gave me a vision. Now, this isn't going to mean anything probably to you. But I called the vice presidente of our lease. And I said, how many husbands do you know in November and December that their wives get mad because their husbands miss church to go deer hunting? And he said, well, I mean, I ain't going to point at him or nothing. <laughs> but he said, well... <laughs> I get in trouble for that sometimes my own self. <laughs> How many of you men know that sometimes your wife get upset because you go hunting on Sunday? <laughs> Three of you, the rest of you are liars. <laughs> no, she don't care if you go on Sunday. It gives her a break. That's what it is. <laughs> and I said, what if, because nobody's hunting at 1.30, what if we came up to the deer lease at the camp, put out flyers at all the other camps, and what if at 1.30 we just started picking and grinning some old gospel hymns, and then about 1.45 we bring about a 15-minute devotion, and we got an opportunity to share Jesus with guys that had never up to that point set foot in a church. Do you think they would come? He goes, absolutely, I think that would come, and we're going to do that this year at our deer lease. Why? Because I don't want to put God in a box. I don't want to put God in a box. You see, up until today, you've thought the only thing you can do for Jesus is what you do. Stay with me. You've thought the only thing you can do for Jesus is what you already do. And I'm here today to tell you, God's calling some of you here to get out of that box and bring me with you when you do. We're just going to let the Holy Spirit work. I'm done. Let's pray. Bow your heads. I need, I need some people up here for invitation. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm going to tell you right now, right now, I'm going to stand up here at front. Don't you come see me. You come see somebody else unless you're here to accept Jesus as your Savior. I'm going to stand right here. If you're here to accept Jesus as your Savior, you come see me. But if you've got a need this morning, I know I've got some folks here that's having some, their chest is going to be opened up. They're having surgery. That we're going to anoint them and pray for them. They've asked us if we would. Whatever your decision, if you say, I need to rededicate my life, I need to repent, I need to do this, I have no idea what your need is, but there's no way in a crowd this size that you don't need to come forward about something. You stand where you are. The, the, the band's going to sing. You come forward. Stand right where you are. You come forward if you need <coughs> any decision. But if it's for salvation, I want you to come to me. Sing it. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, Brian, do not pass me by. Say. Humble cry, 
Come on. Come on, won't you accept him today? Won't you accept him as your personal Savior? Do not pass me by. Let me at your throne of mercy, Lord, find a sweet release. Please. Kneeling there in deep contrition. Lord, help my unbelief. Church, you look at the words. I want you to sing this to the top of your lungs. Say. my wounded broken spirit my God trust him today trust him today Savior Savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling to Savior, Savior, one more time. Savior, Savior. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass. Prayerfully, please, you be seated prayerfully. If you guys would pass out the bread. I want you to do it remembering what I did for you. Right now at this moment, we're not here to pray for anybody. Right here at this moment, we're not here to weep for anybody. Right here in this moment, we're here to do one thing, and that's to remember what he did for us. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you have invitation to partake of this today. He said, I shed my blood and I gave my body on the cross of Calvary. And he met with his disciples and he broke the bread and poured the cup. And he said, every time you do this, I want you to do one thing. I want you to remember what I did for you. 
You pray, church. You pray for yourself. He said, let a man examine himself. And take a moment, if you would, I'm going to translate, to just tell the Lord you're sorry. Lord, I'm sorry for how I failed you in the past. Lord, I'm sorry for the things, not only that I've done, Lord, but Lord, I'm sorry maybe for the things I, I haven't done. And I ask you to forgive me. Lord, as I partake of this today, I, I remember what you did for me on the cross of Calvary. We're going to wait till everybody's served. said take eat this is my body which is broken for you He's great this morning. Say thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for your greatness. How great thou
Kilpatrick. This is my little buddy, Patrick Mahomes. We baptized him last Sunday. Huh? Oh, we're baptizing him today. But he got saved last week. But during the week, he shared Jesus with his little cousin, and he just accepted Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tell me that's not awesome. You see, I can't help but say what Jesus has done for me. Oh, man, y'all going to get me to preaching again. Good night. God, you're so good. You know, the Bible says on the very same night when he was betrayed, he did this. Man, we get betrayed. The first thing we want to do is quit church. Oh, come on now. We're keeping it real. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he did this. <laughs> and one of them that betrayed him was in the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to quit. He said, this is my blood that was shed for you. Take and drink all of it. I need my baptismal candidates to come forward. We got to baptize now. Hey, Joe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. My God. Reach your hands toward my brother. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in baptism to rise and walk in the newness of life. what the church is going to buy me for Pastor Appreciation Month. Bentley. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I baptize you, my brother Bentley, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in baptism to rise and walk in the newness of life.
I baptize this youth of CCOC in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, buried with him in baptism to rise and walk in the newness of life. comes as the rest of these have accepting Jesus as her personal Lord and Savior her name to be written in the Lamb's book of life to never be blotted out I baptize you my sister in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit buried with him in baptism to rise and walk in the newness of life I love him. <laughs> the Bible says we've done as the Lord has commanded, yet there's room. Yet there's room. My goodness, my goodness, God continues to bless. Ushers, let's take our morning off. Bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. Just bring them. Don't quit worrying about trying to clean your friends up. Just bring them. Let Jesus do his thing. Keep your religion out of it. Let's just quit playing Jesus. Just bring them. Hallelujah. Don't you love this family that's gathered around family up here? Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you come to me and say, well, I can't see with all those people standing up there, I'm going to tell you just in Jesus' name, get over it. If you can't see, stand up. If you can't see standing up, get a ladder. Say amen. Nothing greater than family gathering around. Let me tell you something. This is one of the greatest family reunions you can have right here. We always have a family reunions at the cemetery. It's time to have a family reunion around these baptismal waters. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, I know we've kept you long today, but I think it was worth it. Amen. We got to sing this song, though, after a day like today. Stand with me. Oh, and I do not remember if I talked in this service about the church directory. Put it up there for me. Listen to me real close. This will be less than 60 seconds. When I came here, you had finished a church directory. There's just a whole lot of folks in here that you don't know right now. Say it louder. So I think coming up on our anniversary for October, it's, it's the 16th anniversary. We're calling it Sweet 16. We have some belt buckles in there in the store that are absolutely gorgeous that say Sweet 16 CCOC on it. You need to go buy you one. If you're not real cheap, buy two and give it to a friend. 
But listen to me. In order to help us see who someone is when we hear a name, we're going to do another church directory. The good news is that you can be in it for free. The bad news is to get one is going to cost you a whole $20 bill. And I think we ought to have, and here's why we're doing this. If we end up doing a bunch of books, we're going to get it a little cheaper than that. And rather than refunding everybody $2, we're just going to put whatever's left over toward the arena roof. Say amen. <laughs> amen. But it's $20. But here's the thing. We have to pre-order them so we know how many to order. And here's what I want to give you. I want to give you, I want to give you, I want to give you. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, listen up. We're only going to order the exact number that was pre-sold. Say amen. 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 So there's some forms in the back. Amen. There's some forms in the back. Sign that form. Make the church, I mean, make the check for $20 or put $20 in the envelope. Do something. There's somebody sitting at that desk. Pre-order your sweet 16 church directory. It's going to be something that you value for a lot of years. Who knows? That thing may be worth five or $6,000 in a couple of years. We don't know. <laughs> Best $20 investment you ever made. Okay, so if it does clogs up up there, we have them in the store, which is right through that right there. So we've got two places. Please do that today because we've got uh, the dates are coming up in just a few weeks that we're actually going to be taking the pictures. So please get that information out. If you feel like you've been to church today, say amen. 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 That God is good all and all the time. God is good. All right, come back next Sunday. We won't keep you this late or we'll give you your money back. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want you to tell somebody you love them, and then I want you to bring somebody back with you Sunday.